Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. This video is going to be taking a look at the Berber's unique team unit, the Genitour. This isn't the Genitour from the Age of Conquerors that you might have seen in the scenario editor, which always seemed to have a bit of an identity crisis. Instead, this is about the Genitour from the HD expansions. I hope you're ready to shake up the Turks late game and trample all over history with Incas and Aztecs on horses. Let's check it out. Let's start things off by looking at their stats. We'll have to keep in mind there's a bit of variation depending on whether your civilization happens to have bloodlines or not. The difference is pretty straightforward though with just an extra 20 HP. The Turks are a special case and gain an additional extra 20 HP from one of their unique technologies. Meaning when you see an elite genitour it could have anywhere from 55 up to 95 HP. There are some other differences between civilizations because of their bonuses, but we'll talk about that a bit later. To put it in context, the most obvious comparison to another unit I think we can make is with the Skirmisher. They have a similar minimum range mechanic, and in fact in the tech tree they're explicitly described as a mounted Skirmisher. Statistically, they have a similar attack, range, and armor, with the better HP and movement speed for the Genitour being the most glaring difference. They luckily have the same attack rate, which makes looking at their attack bonuses and damage pretty straightforward. So if the Genitour is a higher HP and faster version, what's the trade-off? Well, first of all, they have a higher cost. Both units are lovingly referred to as trash units because they don't cost any gold, but unlike the Skirmisher's 35 wood and 25 food, the Genitour is 50 wood and 35 food. That's about 40% more of each resource. As we'd expect, Genitours tend to win 1 vs 1 fights. The Skirmishers are doing more damage to the regular Genitour, but it's not enough to overcome the extra HP. On the other hand, the Elite Genitour comfortably wins the fight even without bloodlines. An interesting thing to note here is that in the Castle Age, a basic Genitour without bloodlines and an Elite Skirmisher are pretty evenly matched. Again though, they're costing you 40% more resources to make, so what happens if we take that into account? If we balance things out in terms of cost, in Castle Age the Elite Skirmishers have a surprisingly decisive advantage, with either roughly 40 or 60% of their HP remaining, depending on whether the Genitours have bloodlines or not. Trying it again with all of the Imperial Age upgrades, the Bloodlines upgrade becomes the important factor. Fully upgraded, the Genitours win. If not, Skirmishers are the more cost-effective choice. In a real game situation though, the main thing both units will be fighting isn't each other. It's largely going to be archers, so let's see how they both stack up in that situation. With equal resources against a larger group of archers in Castle Age, Genitours without bloodlines are far outperformed by elite skirmishers, both in terms of how quickly they can take down the archers and in their cost effectiveness. After bloodlines, the results are a little more comparable, but the skirmishers are still giving you a better exchange. Keep in mind the Genitours also have one less range, which is definitely an advantage for the skirmishers that's hard to simulate in this sort of test. That's not to say that Genitours aren't a counter to archers, and in terms of population efficiency, they're going to give you much more than skirmishers. But being realistic, in Castle Age, population limit is not likely to be a concern, and skirmishers look like the better choice against archers from a resource point of view. Switching to the Imperial Age, again looking at the elite Genitours with bloodlines, this is where they start to become the better option. They beat the same number of archers faster and with a greater percentage of their health remaining. Even post-imperial genitours without bloodlines perform nearly identically to elite skirmishers against archers. Once you start to think about their extra speed and population efficiency on top of that, it's easy to see them as the better anti-archer unit in the late game. The biggest downside I can see against archers is again the one less range though you could try to offset that by combining them with other ranged units, whether that be archers or elite skirmishers. Their shorter range means over time they'll tend to naturally position themselves a tile or two ahead of other ranged units as they try to find new targets, which lets you take advantage of their extra HP. 
It's a cool self-correcting bit of micro that the units will tend to do all on their own as long as you leave them on aggressive stance. Moving on now, let's take a look at their hidden bonuses. So far they seem like a cross between cavalry archers and skirmishers, but how well do their hidden bonuses support that? Well, their bonus damage against archers is quite comparable to a skirmishers, with even one higher attack for the elite genitour. It's the same thing against other skirmishers, hand cannoneers, and other archer unique units. It seems they also have some extra anti-cavalry archer bonus damage, going as high as plus 7 with the elite genitour. In the last video on Imperial Skirmishers, I'd mistakenly said that skirmishers do less bonus damage to cavalry archers than they do to regular archers. It's been pointed out to me that that's not correct, and they actually do slightly more. So far though, the bonuses are pretty comparable, but there's an important difference to know against spears and pikes. Genitours, in fact, receive no bonus damage against those units at all, which makes them especially vulnerable considering they take bonus damage from those units like any other cavalry would. Skirmishers are generally considered a reasonably efficient counter against pikes, which is not true of the genitour unless you're keeping them very well protected in front with melee units or you're able to do some hit and run. Unlike skirmishers, they also take bonus damage from camels, and basically any unique unit with bonus damage against cavalry, like the Mameluke and Eagle Warrior. Interestingly, the Camel Archer also does bonus damage against the Genitour, which confirms that for the purposes of bonus damage, the Genitour should be considered a type of Cavalry Archer. The Camel Archer is also a Cavalry Archer, taking some bonus damage on its own end as well, but it has the better stats and HP regeneration, so it handles itself fairly well in that fight. Yet another situation like this is with the Genoese Crossbow, where again both units have attack bonuses against each other. This one's a little more evenly matched, though I have to give the advantage to the Genitour considering it's not costing any gold. On a sort of related note to all this, I should point out that unlike cavalry archers, genitours aren't affected by Parthian tactics, so they miss out on some extra pierce armor as well as some extra damage against pikes. In terms of some other hidden stuff, they're obviously a fast moving unit, letting them keep up with cavalry archers that they're chasing, or stay ahead of knights that are after them. Also worth pointing out is that while they are a more population efficient version of the skirmisher, they also take a little bit longer to train. Like always, you'll want to have a lot of archery ranges going at the same time if you're planning to make a lot of them. So now seeing as the last video I did was on the Vietnamese Imperial Skirmisher, I want to take a quick look at how these two team units stack up. One on one, the Vietnamese Imperial Skirmisher almost beats an elite genitour with bloodlines, which means in terms of cost efficiency, it should be by far the better option. With equal resources, even generic Imperial Skirmishers without the Vietnamese Archer HP bonus quickly take out any elite genitours. To me, this brings up an interesting question though, of whether the Vietnamese should ever consider making genitours if they have a Berber ally. Since the Imperial Skirmisher will always be available, this potentially gives them two very strong options to fill the Skirmisher role. After some testing though, it looks like their decision between the two units basically comes down to the same factors as everyone else, with the Genitours being more effective in terms of population space, and the Skirmisher line being more cost effective when using equal resources. We've sort of started already, but let's move fully now into the question of how some different civilization bonuses impact the genitour, and if we can, answer whose are the best. Considering they're an archery range unit and not made at the stable, it's not completely surprising that they are in fact available to the Mayans, Incas, and Aztecs. None of them have bloodlines, of course, so their stats aren't very impressive at a glance, but the Aztecs do get one extra attack in range from their Castle Age unique tech. Even if they aren't great statistically, it's still an intriguing option that can do a reasonable job filling the role of the Cavalry Archer, maybe to attack a trade line or just to do some general harassment behind enemy lines. Incas also benefit from their unique tech, which removes their minimum range and lets them defend themselves against melee units much better. You can sort of achieve a similar thing by setting your units on stand ground, but removing the minimum range altogether is just that much better. As you might have noticed, genitours take a lot of the same bonus damage as cavalry archers, and as we might expect, they're actually affected by a lot of the civ bonuses intended for those units as well. Turks, for example, have a unique tech that gives their cavalry archers an extra 20 HP, 
As I mentioned before, that applies to the Genitures, giving them arguably the best Genitures in the game. That's also particularly significant in this case, given Turks don't normally have access to Elite Skirmishers or even Pikemen, meaning their list of late game options is limited to say the least. The extra 20 HP alone isn't enough to make them cost effective against Skirmishers or anything that dramatic, but they're a big step up over the regular Elite Genitour with Bloodlines. The Huns also have a Cavalry Archer bonus, making them 20% cheaper, which saves you 7 wood and 10 food per unit. They're missing the last Archer armor tech, but they do get Bloodlines, so they're at least decent. The Mongols also have a Cavalry Archer bonus, letting them fire 25% faster. Like the Huns, they don't have the last Archer armor upgrade, which becomes significant against other ranged units and negates the benefits of the faster firing entirely. Basically, it's helpful if you're keeping your Genitours safe, or at the least, it's partially offsetting the fact that you're missing a fairly important Imperial tech. The Franks also get an extra 20% HP, giving them 66 HP, but it doesn't make up for missing Bloodlines and certainly doesn't make up for the fact that they're missing Bracer. In case you're wondering, the Byzantine Genitours are not cheaper, despite their cheaper Skirmisher bonus. In the Inca's case, the Genitour fell under the Skirmisher umbrella, but no such luck for the Byzantines. Now the Saracens are a bit of a weird one. I completely forgot in the last video on Imperial Skirmishers that they benefit from the amazing team bonus against buildings. In this case, the bonus is epic, with Genitours doing at least 4 damage to every building. Castles don't really stand a chance, and believe it or not, a group of 40 Saracen Elite Genitours can take out a castle with completely maxed out HP after hoardings, masonry, and architecture. In fact, if you take away the hoardings and architecture and give the castles only masonry, 34 Elite Genitours can take it down. Given the limited availability of stone, that actually creates the possibility of achieving cost effectiveness by throwing spears at a stone building. So my general impression of the Genitour is that it's a fairly weak unit in the Castle Age. The biggest appeal for me is that you can chase down and force engagements with it, which could be useful against a group of crossbows or the remnants of an archer rush. It's later in the Imperial Age that they start to become the preferred choice for a variety of reasons, though keep in mind their speed comes at the cost of a lot of extra weaknesses to anti-cavalry units. I'd say their greatest significance is in the late game for civilizations with bloodlines but who don't have very good elite skirmishers to begin with, with the Turks being the best example. Most situations will be less obvious and have a few trade-offs that you'll have to weigh, but hopefully this video helps you out in making your decision when the time comes. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.